Welcome to today's R section training. My name is Sonja von Bloh. I hold the training together with my colleague Juliana Stopper. Juliana, perhaps you would like to introduce yourself. Hello. Yes, my name is Juliana Stopper. Um, I'm working in the Global Company in customer support, and I'm also supporting the product engineering for geotechnical analysis add-on and reinforced concrete design. And um, today I will support Sonia with answering your question that you can ask, like she will explain to you. That's it from my side, Sonia. First, I would like to show you how to use the training interface. It's possible via this button to show or to hide the panel. The settings allow you to adjust your audio settings. There's also a chat function. You can use the window at the bottom to send us questions or comments. We try to answer these questions within the training. If there are too many questions that cannot be answered today, you will definitely receive an email afterwards. You don't have to give hand signals. You can just use the chat function. The training is recorded. This will be sent to you after the training. You also get all the models used. I would now like to give you a brief overview of the training series. In today's training, you will receive an introduction to the strengths of materials. This training builds on the first training, which explained how the internal forces are calculated. In today's training, you will learn how the cross-section values and stresses are calculated. In the upcoming training courses, you will then receive an introduction to finite element analysis and then an introduction to our design modules. This brings me to today's training program. I will first give you an introduction to the R section program. Using several examples, I would like to show you the modeling options and design methods in the program. In the first example, a thin walled I uh, section is modeled with graphic functions. I will model this slowly so that you can enter this cross section as well. In another example, I show how to insert cross sections from the database and how you can add other parts to these cross sections. Then I show the modeling of a massive cross-section based on a DXF template. Finally, I model a hybrid cross-section. First, I start a survey. Um, to find out whether strengths of materials has already been covered in your studies, I ask you to answer this now. Most of you uh, has answered now, and um, you can see the result here. Um, most of you have already uh, taken classes in the strengths of materials. Okay. Then I would ask you to answer the following uh, survey. If you are working with two screens or monitors, I will adjust my pace accordingly. Okay, most of you are not working with two screens. So I will uh, make it a little bit uh, slower. OK, then I will show you the R section interface. R section is an independently executable program for generating any thin walled or massive cross sections. If you want to design 
special cross sections in RFEM or AirStab that are not contained in the cross section library, you can create them with R section. You can then import these user defined cross sections into RFEM or AirStab. In R section, it's possible to calculate cross section values and stresses. The R section user interface is the same like in RFM6 or RSTAB 9. Uh, the cross section graphics and dialogues are displayed in the working window here. Most tasks can be performed with the mouse. In the table here in the bottom, um, the keyboard is primarily used for numeric input. And um, you will find out also the uh, output of uh, the calculated results. Um, here on the left, you see uh, three navigators. Um, it's the navigator data, the navigator display, and the navigator for results. The data navigator manages the input data. A double click here, if I open this tree here on an object, maybe here the, the points opens the corresponding uh, dialog in which the selected object can be changed. However, it's also possible to create um, new objects. If you right click on an object, you will find here the corresponding uh, functions. Then I will go to the navigator display. The display navigator controls the graphical display in the working window. If the checkbox in front of an entry is unchecked, this object is hidden in the graphic. If I here uncheck the uh, points, then you will see here in the graphic uh, the points are not displayed anymore. Then I would uh, show you the navigator results. Uh, here the navigator results controls which results are uh, displayed. You can here switch between ordinates, dresses, and so on. Then I would like to go into the mouse functions to move uh, the section, you can hold down the mouse wheel and move the section accordingly. You can turn the mouse wheel uh, to zoom in or to zoom out. Um, then you can right click uh, to open the context menu. You can also uh, select objects with the mouse. If you open a window from left to right, everything that is completely within the selection area will be selected. Here, uh, these objects were completely in the selection area, so they are now selected. Um, what you can see here um, with this uh, yellow uh, color. Um, If you drag a window from right to left, everything that is intersected by the selection area will be selected. You can see here now um, that also here, uh, this part is selected because it was intersected by this uh, window. You can also select individual objects uh, to do this. Uh, left click on the objects to um, be selected. Here I want to select this point, so I have to left click on it. And if I want to add another object to the selection, I have to hold down the control key. And then you can see here uh, the mouse pointer uh, shows a plus. And then I can select the other um, object. 
um, it's also possible uh, to remove objects from the selection. Then I have to hold down the uh, shift key. You can see here my mouse pointer now shows a minus symbol. And uh, then I have to here select the object that I want to um, remove from the selection. For uh, the first part of the training, I am now starting a survey again. I will do this. Please answer the following question about the suitability of our section. Multiple uh, selection is also possible. I will now share the results. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I have uh, closed it, but all answers were correct. Our section is suited for the creation of any thin world or massive cross section and also for the calculation of cross section properties and stresses. This uh, brings me uh, to the first example to create a custom cross-section. I have to create a new file and I will do this uh, via this button, new model. And uh, then uh, I first have to enter the cross-section name and I name it example one. Furthermore, the analysis method must be defined. I have here two possibilities. I have the finite element analysis and the thin world analysis. I choose the thin world analysis in this case. Uh, the effective cross section can be calculated for both analysis methods after activating here the option effective section uh, standard must be selected. And here um, several standards are implemented. Um, it's here Eurocode 3 part 1 1, Eurocode 3 part 1 3 for cold form sections, and Eurocode 9 for aluminum sections. I choose here um, this standard uh, for you will code three part one one and um, according to the standard uh, and the rules described in the standard the uh, sub panels uh, are to be generated and the effective cross section is to be calculated the uh, selection of the uh, analysis me method or the standard is irrelevant when using the R section cross section and RFM or RSTAB. You can select the design method in RFM RSTAB regardless of what is set in R section. Furthermore, the subpanels are generated in the design modules based on the standard selected in the design add on. In uh, the steel add-on, the manufacturing type, what you can see here, uh, determines uh, which part of the standard is used for the design. For a cold formed cross section, um, that's uh, this here, uh, the standard uh, Eurocode 3 part 1.3 is used. And for hot rolled or welded uh, sections, the standard Eurocode uh, 3 part 1 1 is used. I don't define a manufacturing type here in this case. Then I click on OK and a new file uh, will be created. 
and uh, first I define the material. Here um, already two materials are defined. If I uh, double click on it, I will open here the uh, edit material dialog. Um, if uh, no materials are defined, then it's also possible to right click on uh, this material and then create here a new material. Okay, I open this dialog again and um, I uh, can create here on the list uh, via the button create new material a new material or uh, it's also possible to uh, copy uh, selected materials. I can enter here if I click on uh, this um, button user defined name a name uh, directly and our section if I type in this name uh, lists all materials that match that name but it's also possible uh, to open the material library via this button and I will do this in this case and here in uh, the material library filters are available here on the uh, left uh, to uh, quickly find the material here maybe i have i can choose uh, steel uh, then here on the right all steel materials are listed um, uh, here also a search is available i in which I can search for a material and I search here for S355 and uh, then I choose here this uh, standard and here this material and then I click on OK. If uh, the material is not in the material library, I can create this my material if I activate here this checkbox uh, user defined material and then it's possible here in the following tabs to uh, define uh, the properties uh, that I want to use. I don't do this today, so I deactivate this option again and then I click on OK. I uh, then create uh, the elements. The definition of elements is required if the analysis method analysis of thin wall structures is selected or if the effective cross section is to be calculated. An element must always lie in an area and this area is called an R section uh, part. Elements can be created graphically or via a dialog. The graphical input is called up via the symbols that you can find here. Um, and the input via a dialog is called up uh, via um, this navigator data. Here you can create a new element. When creating an element via the graphical input, the part is also created. When created, creating an element via the dialog box, the parts and the points of the element must be created beforehand. And that's why I can choose um, this dialog now, because I haven't created um, the points before. So. I choose this function for the creation of uh, elements. Here I choose single. <clears throat> I enter the uh, bottom flange here uh, first. And uh, for you, this I use uh, the input mode length and direction. And here I define an angle of uh, zero degree and I define a length of 150 millimeter and a thickness of 10.7 
millimeter. Then I uh, can insert this element in uh, the working area graphically, or it's also possible to define here the point coordinates. I put this here on the coordinates uh, zero, zero. And for this, I left click here in the working area. Then I uh, create the web. And uh, for this, I use uh, the input mode length and direction again. And here I define an angle of 90 degree. And you can see here what's happening. And now I uh, reverse the orientation. And I define here a length of a 289.3 millimeter and a thickness of 7.1 millimeter. And then I left click here on this uh, node. Elements must be connected for the calculation of the effective cross section. Um, the connection is to be made via the start and end points of the elements. If two elements share the same points, they are connected. I have now here um, this element and this element, and they share here uh, this point, so uh, they are connected. Uh, then I create the left flange. For this, I use here um, the length and direction input mode again. And here I define an angle of zero degree and a length of 75 millimeters and a thickness of 10.7 millimeters. And then I left click here on this point. Then I reverse the orientation again. And I left point on this, left click on this point again. Okay. The uh, cross section should be a rolled a T cross section to which a lower flange is welded. The round radius is 15 millimeter. I can define lines to create them or use a function um, that's uh, called create round corners. I uh, find uh, this function here, create round corners, and I click on it and then I define a round radius of 15 millimeters and then I have to left click here on the corresponding lines and um, if I right click uh, on the mouse I um, leave uh, the uh, dialog or I close the dialog. Then I have to define uh, the welds. So for this, I use uh, the function create angled corner. And uh, here uh, you have uh, two corner type types, uh, both edges and uh, edge and angle. And I choose here the edge and angle uh, corner type. The lower flange is welded with a six millimeter double fillet weld. And I choose, um, I, I can type in here um, the, the length, or it's also possible to uh, calculate it in uh, this dialog. Um, so I define here six multiplied by the square root of two. And then I have to define the angle, and the angle is 45 degrees. Then I have to click on the corresponding lines. And now my welds are created. 
but you can hear, see here are uh, the sub panels and these sub panels are automatically generated based on the standard selected in the uh, base data uh, dialog and these cannot be changed. If no elements are defined, the cross-section classification in our section and, the design, and, and in the design modules of RFAM or RSTAB is not possible. And um, it's also not possible uh, to do a calculation of the effective cross-section if no elements and um, no sub-panels are defined. In the design add-ons of RFAM or RSTAB, like a steel design, the cross-section is then designed according to the cross-section class 3. I would also like to use um, this example to show you how to calculate stresses and the effective uh, cross-section. And in order to calculate stresses or the effective cross-section, a load case must first be created. Uh, load combinations can also be created and I create a load case now and I do this via um, the navigator uh, data. For this I right click on the um, load case and then I choose a new load case. Then I can define a load case name if I want to and I name it N and then I create uh, a second load case via this button here, create new load case, and I give the load case the name uh, M. Then I define a load combination via this button, and here I assign these two uh, load cases uh, for the load combination, it's also possible to define here a factor if I want to. And here it's also possible to rename uh, that load combination and I name it N plus M. And then I click on OK. <clears throat> the internal forces can then be defined manually or imported from Airstab or RFM to import uh, the internal forces. You have to click here in the table internal forces and then you have here um, the possibility um, if you click on this um, to import internal forces from RFM or RSTAB. I don't want to show this today. I want to define the internal forces manually. So I go to the navigator data again to internal forces and then I double click on internal forces and then I define a load case N in load case number one, an axial force of uh, minus uh, 10 uh, Kilonewton. Compressive forces are negative, tensile forces are positive. The axial force acts in the center of gravity of the cross section. Here I click on apply and next, and then I choose the load case to uh, load case number two. And here I want to define not um, an axial force, so I define it here um, to a zero, and uh, I want to define here a bending moment about the y-axis, and here I define 100 kilonewton meter, and then I click on OK. In the navigator data, you can now see here in load case one, an axial force of uh, minus 10 kilonewton is defined and in load case number two, uh, bending moment about 100 kilonewton meter is uh, defined. The uh, blue dots that you can see here on the graphic are the stress points. Stresses are calculated and displayed at the stress points. 
the stress points are generated automatically. Stress points can also be defined manually, and I want to do uh, that here. So I go to the navigator data again, and then I go to uh, stress points. I right click on stress points and choose here new stress point. Then I um, can define the point number if I want to. I define here 100, and uh, then I have to define the uh, coordinates and why I define 75 millimeter and in set minus 100 millimeter. And then I click on OK, and um, the stress points uh, will be uh, generated. You can see it if you uh, go with your mouse upon the stress point. It's also possible um, to show the numbering. Um, you can right click here and um, choose a show numbering. Then you can see here, okay, um, this is uh, the stress point 100. I deactivate this numbering again. It's also possible to um, show the numbering via uh, the navigator display. Here you have this checkbox numbering, and um, here you can uh, select or deselect um, the uh, display of points, lines, and uh, so on if you want to. Uh, which stresses are to be calculated and output in tabular and graphical form can be set in the stress configuration? I will show you this now. For this, I go to the navigator data again, and uh, then I go here to stresses, stress configuration, and I double click on uh, the stress configuration and um, the corresponding checkboxes are to be activated or deactivated here. If I click on uh, this, entry, um, then you get an information how uh, the stress is uh, calculated. Then I click here on OK. I uh, start the calculation now. And in uh, the result navigator here, uh, you can switch between uh, the results of the uh, gross cross section. That's here the thin vault analysis. I can show you here um, the stresses maybe. And um, this is for this load case number two. And you can switch here also. You can see here the stresses from load case number one or uh, from the load combination. I choose here load case uh, one. Um, there was an axial force uh, defined. And it's also possible uh, to change the type of display. Here I uh, choose off. And um, it's also here possible uh, to, to show uh, the um, different uh, section properties. You can uh, show here um, the static moments or uh, the ordinates or um, unit stresses or um, the stresses. Um, then it's also possible to show here the effective uh, thin vault, uh, uh, the, the effective uh, cross section. And um, you can see here in the uh, graphic in the working window um, that this uh, cross section falls into class four. Um, here, um, this cross section is uh, reduced uh, according to the standard. The reduction in strength due, due to local buckling can be taken into account through uh, effective width, width, and this is uh, implemented in our section. It's also possible um, to um, display or uh, to control uh, the section properties in numerical uh, form. 
uh, for this, um, you have here also the possibility um, to show you the uh, section properties um, of the gross cross section. For this, you have to choose here thin vault analysis. And um, then you have to have the possibility to show the section properties here um, via this um, drop down. And here you can see the sectional area that's uh, calculated for the cross section and uh, uh, the area moment of inertia about y axis and z axis uh, and so on. And it's also possible to show here the uh, stat statical moments and uh, warping in numerical form and also here uh, the stresses. Furthermore, it's possible. Uh, to show a numerical uh, form the effective uh, cross section. Here you have uh, the um, effective section uh, properties. And um, also you have uh, the section classification. And there's, you see uh, here um, the section falls into class four. And if you click on this uh, sub panel, uh, then you see, okay, uh, this uh, subpanel sub uh, falls into class four, and um, these uh, subpanels uh, fall uh, into class one. And you can also see here the effective uh, widths that are uh, calculated. I'm now starting a survey again regarding the requirements for cross sectional uh, classification. Multiple uh, selection is here also possible. Okay, I now will show you the results. And uh, for a classification, internal forces must be defined, elements must be defined, and it's necessary to activate uh, the effective section add-on. Okay, I would now like to use another example to show you how you can access cross sections from the library and modify them. For this, I create a new file. I click here on new file and I name it example two. I choose the analysis method thin vault analysis and I choose here also the option effective section and uh, the standard EC3 part 11. And I click on OK. I define the material first. For this, I modify this material. Um, this is um, the material that I wanted to use, but I show you the material library again. I can click on this button, import from material library, and then I search for the material that I want to use. Um, it's an uh, S235. I choose this material, click on OK, and OK. And then I insert a cross section from the cross section library. To do this, I right click here in Navigator on the tree section and choose new section. Um, the window is structured like the material window. 
a cross section can be created here uh, via uh, this button create new cross section. It's also possible uh, to copy a selected section and also possible to um, type in here the name of the cross section, maybe here EPE 200. And uh, then all a uh, cross section that match with the name are uh, listed here in the list. It's also possible to open the cross section library via uh, this button here, import section from library. And uh, then I have uh, to select the section from the library. And here I choose the L section. Um, here again, the cross-section library is um, in the same way structured like the material library. You have uh, here filters on the left uh, where you can um, filter from manufacturer, for example. And it's also possible to uh, search for a cross-section. And here I type in L200. 150, 200, zero was missing, 150, and 12. And here I choose uh, this standard and then this section and I click on OK. Uh, the uh, angle should be mirrored around the Y axis. So I um, activate the checkbox about y-axis and uh, the section should be rotated by 90 degree, degree. So I type in here 90 degree. Um, furthermore, I select here the offset point in the graphic. And um, this is, oh, sorry, um, this is this point. And at this point, the cross section is placed at the insertion point. And uh, the insertion point, I can define it manually here in um, these boxes, or it's also possible uh, to pick this in the working window. I will do this. I pick here the zero, zero, and uh, then I click on OK. Uh, when inserting uh, this thin walled cross section, here uh, two elements were defined and also uh, the part. The cross section can be subsequently uh, edited. Um, if I double click on this uh, cross section, I open the edit section window and uh, here ca I can uh, change the section location or uh, the mirroring. And I can also sh change here uh, the, the cross section. I can import another cross section from the library. It's also possible to uh, move or mirror this cross section um, via um, these uh, function move, copy, or, or mirror. And um, However, in, in order to modify uh, individual objects, uh, such as points or lines, the cross-section must be uh, splitted. The cross-section is to be supplemented by further cross-section parts. I uh, therefore split the cross-section into its individual parts for further processing. And for doing this, I first deactivate here and this function uh, auto split uh, element. And uh, then I right click on the section and choose here um, the function convert into normal geometry. Now this uh, cross section is uh, splitted into its uh, objects and the fillet isn't needed, um, so I uh, delete this point. 
and with uh, deleting this point, the fillet is also deleted. And now you can see that the elements are colored in red. And um, this red color um, uh, says, OK, um, there's uh, something wrong. And um, here, the part is missing. You can see the part was also deleted, and elements must lie in a part. Uh, so uh, now um, these uh, elements um, are shown in red. OK. Um, I also add then more elements, and I do this via the graphical input. input I um, choose here single. And I use the input mode length and direction again. Uh, here I define an angle of uh, zero degree. And I define here a length of 200 millimeter and a thickness of uh, 12 millimeter. And I want to place this uh, here. And for this, I have to reverse the orientation, and then I left click here in this working window, and then I add another element uh, here uh, with an angle in the work plane of 90 degree. I have to reverse the orientation again, so I click on this button. Uh, then I define a length of uh, 400 millimeter and a thickness of 10 millimeter. And then I left click here on this uh, point. Then I right click so that this uh, window is closed. And I uh, don't need uh, these uh, lines here. So I delete them. I press here the delete button. I do this for this line also. Press on delete. Um, welding seams should also be taken into account in the cross-section uh, properties. Um, and I create the weld seams using the angle corner function that I've shown you before in the another example. So I uh, Click here on the button Create Angled Corner. I use the corner type Edge and Angle again. And here, uh, a six millimeter double fillet weld is to be defined. So uh, that I define here six multiplied by square root of two. And I define here an angle of 45 degree. And then I click on the corresponding lines. Furthermore, I uh, still have to create the uh, part by selecting um, the relevant lines. And for this, I use uh, the function um, that you can find here, uh, select boundary. Uh, here, I have to define the material for the part. Then I click on OK, and then I click on um, the uh, line. And the part uh, is uh, created. And what you can see here, now the red color for the elements are gone, because here now the part, um, what's necessary for the elements, is uh, created. Um, I would now like to calculate the effective cross-section and the stresses so that I uh, create a load case and internal forces. Uh, to do this, I right-click here on New Load Case. And I type in the name uh, N. I add another load case with uh, load case name M and also a load combination here. I change the name to N plus M. Then I click on OK. Then I have to define the internal forces. 
for this, I double click on the internal forces and I uh, define here an um, axial force of minus uh, 50 kilonewton for load case n, apply and next. Then I change to load case 2, define here an axial force of 0 kilonewton and a bending moment of 20 kilonewton meter and uh, click on OK. I start the calculation now. And I can see here uh, the effective cross section. I change here the type of display to off. And I want to see um, the stresses. And I see now here the reduction uh, due to um, the class 4 cross section. I can control this here numeric in numerical form, section classification. Okay, it's class 4. And um, I can see here also uh, the calculated uh, reduction. I uh, want to create um, a printout for the documentation. And to do this, I go here to Navigator Data again. Then I right click on the printout report and choose New Printout Report. And um, then I can choose the uh, report items. I, want, I don't want to have uh, the uh, stresses by material by member, location, stress points, or stress stresses by stress points here. And I don't want to see the stresses by loading and material here. Then I click on Save and Show, and the printout uh, will be generated. You can see it here. And it's also possible to uh, add a, a graphic to this printout. For this, I uh, go to this button here, print uh, graphics to the printout. And um, maybe I can change here a little bit um, the representation. Maybe I can. Add here all values, and I want to tilt the result diagram into the work plane. And uh, then I choose this print graphics to the printout report again. And here it's also possible um, to influence um, the size of uh, the picture here. I can choose here window filling, um, then it's uh, much more bigger. And then I click on Save and Sure. And then um, this uh, graphic will be added uh, to the printout. I'm uh, starting a survey again. Uh, please answer if an analysis of thin walled structures is suitable for the calculation of a rolled parametric steel section. Most of you have now answered. So I close the survey again and I share the results. And a uh, correct answer is here uh, that the analysis of thin walled structures is suitable for the calculation of ruled and parametric uh, steel uh, sections. Uh, in my first example, I show my screen again and I close here the printout uh, report and I go to my first example again. I uh, forgot to show you how to um, 
display the stresses uh, on a certain uh, stress points. Uh, for this, you remember maybe we have created stress point number 100. And if you want to see the stress stresses on stress point number 100 in the table, then you have to um, choose the table stresses. And then you click onto the stress point. And um, now you see here um, the stresses here on uh, the stress point. I forgot to uh, show you this. OK. Um, in the next example, I would like to show you that you can also create cross sections uh, by importing a DXF file. A DXF file can be imported via menu file, import DXF. Then you have to uh, choose uh, the corresponding uh, DXF file, click on open. And here in this uh, window, I can uh, specify the insert point and the rotation here. And it's also possible uh, to uh, switch the coordinates. And um, for um, in, in, in this section, create our section model, you have uh, three options for creating the uh, cross section. And here the option to create all elements automatically is useful if the outlines of the cross sections are available in the DXF file. Our section attempts to create center lines for parallel lines and then set the elements between the intersections. Only elements that do not exceed uh, the maximum uh, thickness uh, defined here in the maximum uh, thickness field are created. And then uh, this import function use DXF templates lines as center lines is useful if the cross section geometry is available as a center line model. You can uh, um, then import this cross section and then the um, elements are created on the center lines with a thickness uh, that you can define uh, here. Then uh, the function create DXF template is useful for massive cross sections uh, where no elements need to be created. In addition, this function can also be used for complex cross sections where I only want to create elements for the decisive uh, cross section parts. And with this import functions, uh, the lines in the DXF file are imported as lines. And I uh, use uh, this uh, function here now. So I click on OK. And now the cross section is imported. And um, first I define the material for this cross section. So I go to the navigator data again, click on materials, double click on this material, and I uh, want to uh, choose an aluminum material from the um, material library. So I open the material library again, and then I can choose uh, here aluminum and here I search for DN6060. And then I choose this material. And I click on OK. Um, then I uh, open the base data. And here I have to choose uh, the analysis method and a finite element analysis is to be carried out um, for this uh, cross section. Uh, so I choose here the finite element analysis. Uh, finite element analysis should be performed on massive cross sections 
uh, such as timber cross sections or concrete cross sections, in contrast to uh, thin walled cross sections, where the stresses can be regarded as constant across the cross section thickness, the stress distribution in massive cross sections is variable. Um, and this can only be determined uh, with a finite element analysis. So I choose this analysis method. And I click here on OK. In a finite element analysis, only a part need to be defined. Uh, it's not necessary to define uh, elements. Um, so uh, I define now this part. And for this, I use uh, the function select boundary. Then I choose here the material ENRW6060. Click on OK. Then I uh, choose the line and uh, the part will be uh, created. After creating the part, I still need to create the openings. I uh, use also here the function select boundary for op openings. And then I choose here the corresponding lines. And I want to show you um, that you can also um, create um, openings uh, with the function uh, rotating. So I uh, now select the uh, opening that I want to rotate and copy. And then I select the function rotate selected objects. Then, um, because I want to create this uh, opening, I activate the checkbox create copy. I want to have three copies and then I have to define the point of rotation. I can pick it in the work window and then I click on OK. Oops. Ah, sorry, I forgot to define the rotation angle. This should be 90 degree. And then I click on OK. And now the, uh, the openings are uh, created. <clears throat> I want to calculate the stresses here as well. Uh, so I create a load case, new load case, and I name it uh, N plus MT. Then I click here on OK. Then I have to define the internal forces. And here I define a compressive force of minus 10 kilonewton and here I define a torsional moment about uh, 0.3 kilonewton meter and I click here on OK and then I start the calculation. And here in the navigator results, I have only uh, the uh, results of the finite element analysis. And here I choose uh, the stresses, uh, the equivalent uh, stresses here. And you can see now the graphical results on the um, working window. I'm uh, starting a survey again. So I choose it first. Please answer whether the finite element method is suitable for the calculation of massive cross sections uh, such as concrete or timber cross sections.
Okay, I now close the survey and I share the results. 100% um, have answered uh, right and this is also the correct answer uh, to this uh, question. Okay, as a last example, I show the modeling of a composite cross-section. In our section, it's also possible to model cross-sections that consists of different materials. Ideal uh, cross-section values are determined for such a cross-section. Uh, for this, I create a new file and I name it example 4. Here I choose the analysis method finite element analysis and I click on OK. Then I have to define the materials. For this I uh, modify the first material and here I open the material library again and I want to use a steel material S235. So I choose this material. And for the second material, if you don't have one, I will uh, delete it. <laughs> if you don't have one, uh, you can uh, create it via this button, create new material. And then you can go to the material library and then you can uh, choose here a uh, concrete for material type. And uh, then I choose here uh, C4050. I click on OK and OK. Um, a thousand millimeter wide and 200 millimeter high concrete uh, cross section lying on a AHB a steel cross section is to be modeled. So I uh, first the I model the concrete cross section. For this, I use here uh, this function single element. I use the input mode uh, length and direction. And I define here a length of a uh, thousand millimeter millimeters and a thickness of 200 millimeters. And I choose here the material two, uh, the concrete material. And then I add this here in the working window with right click. I close the window and uh, then I um, select uh, AHB 400 from the cross section library. To do this, I right click here on section, new section. I open the section library, choose here I beams, H beams, and then I type in. AHB. Here I want to use this cross section and I choose here the material, the steel material number one as 235. Click on OK. Then I pick here this uh, point and I pick here this location and then I click on OK. Now I have here two lines. Um, this is not so good for the calculation. Um, that's why I right click on the section and I uh, convert it into normal geometry. And I have uh, also here the two lines. But it's possible here with this function, uh, connect lines and elements. I go here by these lines, right click. And then you will see we have only uh, one line.
um, then uh, I create a load case for the bending moment. Here, new load case. I name it M. Click on OK. And I uh, define an internal force of uh, 100 kilonewton meter and click on OK. And then I can calculate this uh, cross section. And um, in the section properties, you can see that the um, ideal uh, section properties will be calculated. The uh, reference material is always um, the first material that I've defined. Um, here in this case, the S235. And um, you can also see here the geometric uh, sectional area. Um, I would also like to show you how to import the cross section into RFM. Uh, to do this, I uh, save this cross section. And now I open RFM. And to uh, import uh, the cross section, I go here to the navigator data again and right click on the section, new section. Then I open the uh, section library and uh, here uh, we have a button for importing uh, cross sections uh, made with uh, R section. So I click on this button. Then I choose here my cross section that I've created and click on open. Now this cross section will be imported. And uh, you see that this checkbox hybrid is uh, activated. And here, in um, the tab hybrid, you see the material assignment. You can see here now um, for parts uh, number uh, two, the um, material S235 is assigned. Then I click here on uh, OK. Uh, it's also possible to change it here if you want to. And it's also possible here to choose a different material. You can create it uh, also here in uh, this uh, dialog. Maybe here in S355. And um, here, maybe it's better here to use this material. And here, different material. Ah, sorry. I have made a mistake. <laughs> I choose here the concrete material. Okay, okay. So you see, you, you can change it uh, by your needs, and it's uh, now possible to use uh, this cross section uh, in a member. For this, I create a new member. Um, here, I can choose uh, the section. And now I've uh, created uh, that member with this uh, cross section. Um, with this example, I have come to the end of the training. It was taught uh, how you can create general cross sections uh, with graphic functions.
how you can add cross-section parts to database uh, sections and create uh, sections based on DXF import. Finally, I would like to show you where you can find uh, more information. Uh, for this, I open our web page uh, here at rubal.com. And here on top education, um, you can um, uh, choose uh, maybe here um, AirFM6 uh, for uh, students. Uh, oops, uh, sorry. Uh, then you can uh, open here the knowledge base or um, it's also possible here via support and learning to open frequently asked questions. Um, I hope that the training for using our section has helped you and thank you for your attention.